in this problem, we're trying to find two things. And the first is definitely the trickiest. We're trying to actually find what's the balancing point of this system. So we took a heavy rod, but then we tied a large mass to it close to one of the ends, and I'm trying to find the balancing point. All right, that's the hard part. And then the second thing we're trying to get is what's the upward force ex exerted by that fulcrum. So a fulcrum is just a pointy balancing point. Uh, certainly that's exerting an upward force, but I want to figure out how much. So let's look at numbers real quick. The actual rod has a mass of 350 grams, but I'm going to write that in kilograms. The hanging mass is one kilogram. So the force exerted there by gravity it's going to be 9.8 newtons. Um, remember, when we're talking about the torque exerted by gravity, you can compute that by just looking at the center of mass of the extended object and pretending all the mass is concentrated there. So that's why I've drawn the force exerted by gravity on little m right at the center of the stick. And that's going to be a 0 0.350 times 9.8, giving me approximately 3.43. Newtons. The first question here is to, to find the balancing point. And so I don't want to have to think about what's the force exerted by the fulcrum in order to get that done. And so the standard trick is to say, okay, I'm going to do a torque analysis and I'm going to put my rotation axis for the torque analysis right on the point where I don't want to have to think about the force exerted. So the force exerted by the fulcrum exerts no torque for this axis because the lever arm is zero. So that's where we're putting our rotation axis for our torque analysis. That puts the force exerted on the one kilogram mass at a distance of x from the balancing point. But this is the tricky part. What's the distance between the force exerted by gravity on the rod and the fulcrum? And you can express this in terms of x. This little chunk right here, so from the location of the hanging mass to the center of mass of the rod, must be 35 centimeters because the rod had a total length of 90. It takes 45 centimeters to get to the halfway point, but I tied on that mass 10 centimeters in from the end, so that must be 35. And this little chunk is x, which means this leftover chunk must be 35 minus x. Now I can get into my torque analysis. So I have the sum of the torques must be equal to zero. Another way to say this that is usually more convenient is that the sum of all the clockwise torques has to be equal to the sum of all the counterclockwise torques in order for the system to balance. And again, I'm looking at this green rotation axis. So I look at anything that's going to cause the system to spin clockwise around that rotation axis. And the force of gravity on the center of mass is the only thing there. So I have 3.43 newtons times a distance of 35 minus x. Counterclockwise torques, well, the force of gravity on the hanging mass is going to try to spin the system counterclockwise. That's a force of 9.8 newtons applied through a, di a distance of x. So the size of the lever arm between that force and our rotation axis is just x. And if we go ahead and leave the units in centimeters here, it's not going to be a, a problem. x is just going to come out in centimeters. And we're really computing torques in newton centimeters instead of newton meters. Uh, so let's just go ahead and leave it that way. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to get... 120.1 minus 3.43x is equal to 9.8x. Add the x containing terms to both sides. I get 120.1 is equal to 13.23x. And then finally, I divide by that coefficient and get the x is equal to 9.1 centimeters. So if you set up that fulcrum, 9.1 centimeters, past the location where the heavy mass is tied on. You can set this system down and it will just balance and just stay there. The second question I wanted to answer, so I guess I'll call that one A. The second question I wanted to answer is what's the upward force exerted by the fulcrum? So I'll call that F. And probably the quickest way to get at this is to look at a force analysis. So I'm looking in the Y direction. The sum of all the forces in the Y direction must be zero. The force exerted by the fulcrum is the only one that points up. So that F is going to be equal to the sum of both of the downward forces. It makes sense to look at it symbolically for a second. All that is, is the sum of both of the masses 
multiplied by g, which I think makes a lot of sense. The fulcrum better push up with a magnitude equal to the total weight of all of the mass that's being supported. So I end up with a total weight of, or a total mass of 1.35 kilograms, and then g is 9.8 meters per second squared. And it turns out this force is 13.23 newtons. I normally round to three sig figs, so I'll call it 13.2.